Hello everyone, welcome back to the 20 games challenge. Today, I am not just remaking a game, but making a game in a new genre that didn't exist a year ago. Also, I lost track of scope a little bit on the last video, but I'm gonna make this game in just 24 hours. Let's take a quick walk down memory lane. I've made a bunch of games at this point, and 10 games ago, I made Asteroids. This is still one of my favorite remakes to date, but I had a bit of an issue with this game. You see, near the end of development, I thought it would be fun to throw in a super weapon of sorts, and I made this thing that destroys everything, and then I went and balanced the game while playing with the super weapon in place. And the final game is impossible to beat if you don't use the weapon, and pretty easy to beat if you do use the weapon. And so I made this game that became horribly unbalanced because I added an incredibly powerful weapon to it. There's this issue in game design of making the player feel powerful without making the challenge trivial. A number of games have solved this in various ways, but recently a game came out called Vampire Survivors, and this game nailed that escalating power feeling. This is about a year ago this game launched and immediately became a genre. If you look up Survivors on Steam, there are a ton of games that are emulating this one pretty closely. The whole idea here is that you continually buy upgrades and get more and more and more powerful and your enemies level up at the same rate. There's just so many, I think, good lessons for how to make a really compelling and fun game here. And so I wanted to make a survivor's like, but instead of having vampires in my game, I'm gonna put it in space. I'm gonna take my Asteroids game and I'm gonna remake it as a survivor's game. And so that's the goal today is to make Asteroid Survivors, which is going to be based on vampire survivors. And you might think, well, this sounds like an easy task. You already have an Asteroids game to start with, uh, but the first thing I'm gonna do is throw out all of this and start over. That might seem like a waste, but it is very difficult to retrofit an old game for new mechanics. I have this old code in the player that spawns bullets. That makes sense for a game that's as simple, but if I want to have a bunch of weapons, I can't do this. So I'm gonna go through and I'm going to re-architect this game, start from scratch, and then we are going to move forward by adding in the survivor's elements. One of my favorite things about this game that I'm gonna pull forward is the graphics. Back in the arcade, when graphics looked like this, there were also games that looked like this. Uh, they used the same fundamental technology, but instead of drawing out pixels on the screen, they would take an electron beam and move it wherever they wanted, and you would get this analog precision. This was a really, really cool way to draw things. For me, there's something really compelling about retro without pixels. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna be making my own retro graphics for this. I'm doing a little bit of fun headcanon where I have a device that can go and draw out vectors, but then also can do a raster scan on a second pass. And so that's why I have a star field along with the lines, but that's the idea. I'm going to be having, for the most part, these lines, but a few dots for things like the star field or the particle effects. I didn't actually check the science until after I did this, but I ended up using alpha transparency instead of using grayscale, which means when you move these lines over each other, the color changes and you get these light spots. And I thought it looked really cool. Uh, it turns out the phosphors faded really, really fast on the original CRTs, and so I don't think the light would add in your eyes like that, but I think it looks cool, and a lot of retro is about emulating memories of things as opposed to emulating the actual thing. So I'm gonna keep that as a kind of fan fiction version of of the original arcade graphics here. All in all, remaking my old Asteroids game took about 12 hours. It took a long time because I was messing around with some of the graphics. Uh, everything is being rendered to a texture and I was then trying to write some shaders for that to make it look fancy or emulate an old CRT monitor. Uh, none of that worked out. It was kind of a waste of time. But I ended up creating a game that is the original Asteroids plus some of the foundations of a Survivor's game. I do have a larger screen than uh, just the single screen Asteroids would be. I do have screen wrapping, so you can go off one end, come on the other, and then you can shoot the Asteroids, which will break, and drop the minerals, which you can then collect. Uh, when you collect enough of these, you are presented with some upgrades. Right now, this is all hard-coded. This system doesn't actually work, but if you click the button, it will send a signal to your player to upgrade the gun or to level up system to give you more lives. So those are the basics in place. We have a core game loop, and the Asteroids game is done. I mean, at this point, there's nothing else to do there. So we're going to be adding in the survivor's elements and adding in the content from this point going forwards. 
I should probably mention my goals for this game. I am doing everything with just the line 2D node for the art, and I am only doing four colors in total, which is just white and various alpha grayscale transparency. So I don't have much going on there, and my thought is that should enable me to add in a whole bunch of content and objects pretty quickly. I sat down, wrote out a kind of silly story. Basically, you are a poacher in a national park. You're coming in and mining all of these asteroids in this beautiful, pristine asteroid field, and the authorities will then start sending more and more and more enemies to come in and try to destroy you as you're doing this. And so you start out by mining the rocks, but you end by fighting all of these enemy ships and whatever. So that's the general idea. The other fun thing I thought I'd do is for the upgrade system in Vampire Survivor, you get six weapons and six upgrades, and that is it. If you want six swords, you can magically hold all of those swords. And I thought it would be interesting, instead of doing that, to actually have weapon slots assigned. So maybe you have two or three different turrets available to you. Well, if you pick one turret, that fills your turret slot, and you don't get another one. So instead of just having the trade-off of what six weapons do I want in general, you have the trade-offs of which weapons do I want to fill which slots, because I only get to pick one for this slot. So I think that would make the choices a little bit more interesting. I don't know, but that was the plan. So I have this kind of ambitious goal for this game, and we'll see how much I actually manage to finish. Now, a lot of video games will use a dynamic difficulty to try to keep the player in the flow state, and they will try to manipulate to make things easier or harder as they go. Vampire Survivors is really interesting because it doesn't do that. It actually has a fixed script for every level. So in the first level, the Mad Forest, at exactly five minutes, you get a Praying Mantis boss and a Flower Ring. And every time you play the level, you get that exact same set of things. So there's this really interesting thing that happens when it's scripted. You can get out ahead or you can fall behind. And when you fall behind, you lose the round and then you get to pick better weapons and start over. So I had this idea for how I could do this in my game. I had a resource that had a minimum count for each enemy type. And then I also had a spawn count that I was calling impulse. Each one of these had a timer and I have an array of them. And as I moved on to the next one, it would check the impulse count and it would spawn a bunch of objects. When you kill them, they don't come back. But then the minimum count, as you keep destroying objects, they keep getting replaced. So if you have a minimum of 20 small asteroids, at any given time, there are 20 of them in the level. So that was the idea. And I got to the end of this and realized this isn't the best way to do things. I actually then removed the timer, instead tried to use an animation player. And it turned out that was a way better option. So I have an animation. It's a 30 second long animation, but then I'm changing the time to run at 1 60th the speed, meaning this is 30 minutes, which is the same as Vampire Survivors. And so now I can change these spawn counts within the animation itself. You can actually call functions directly from an animation player. So as I call that function, it'll kick off that impulse and whatever is a set at that moment, that's what it'll spawn in, but it'll just spawn one of those or whatever number I specify. And when you destroy them, they don't come back. So I think that gives me a really cool combination where I can add in a boss or a challenge item that when you destroy it, it's not replaced. And then I can also have items that keep flowing in. So there's a constant churn of enemies to defeat. So yeah, getting all of that scripting together took about an hour and then refitting it to use an animation player was another half hour. So I'm doing pretty good for time and I decided the next thing is I need to get these upgrade cards working. Right now these are hard coded where it's just the image here, uh, you can see this is the text and then it's just a button that links in. So I wanna be able to actually select different upgrades and have those randomly shuffled in. And yeah, that took five and a half hours to get that done. Uh, honestly, about half that time was just playing and playtesting the game. So I added something in to help me uh, keep focused. I cannot be playtesting this game. I just need to get it finished. And then at the end, I can get everything hopefully balanced. Another super quick thing I did, this was like five minutes. I have a single node that is being modulated to change the color of the entire game. I just added in a little option, like there's some colors in an array, pick one at random and say every time the game starts, you get a different color. That little change added so much to the game where it's like, ooh, what is it going to look like for this run? Coming back into my ideas, I'm just going to try to get maybe one or two enemies and then a couple more guns. I'm going to put the guns in first and see if I have time for the enemies because I really do want to have more than one gun. And then at the very end, I'm going to take the last hour and try to play test and do some tweaking. We'll see where we can go from there. 
It turns out each weapon took about an hour to implement from start to finish, just because there's some custom scripting for all of them. Uh, but I have four weapons in total, and each of these is in a different slot, so you can equip all four weapons in this version of the game. I wasn't able to make quite as much content as I wanted, so it makes sense that everything can be available to you in one run. I have a laser gun, which starts off with two barrels, it'll alternate sides, and then it will level up to eventually be six barrels in total, and it'll fire down each line in a cascade. The next weapon I added in was a laser turret. This one fires the same ammo, but it turns and it tracks the closest enemy and shoots towards that. I have, again, multiple barrels where you'll start out with one and then you upgrade to two and then eventually three. Again, this thing becomes a pretty constant stream of bullets. I also did set the damage values for these bullets. At first, every bullet was destroying every asteroid. For the extremely large ones, it made sense to be able to soak up a little damage. That gives me more flexibility for leveling up because I can double the damage of your bullets along with doubling the fire rate. I really wanted to stick with doubling things in the level ups. I think it feels much more powerful when you get double something versus fires 20% faster. So that was my goal there is I'm doubling the firing rate or adding a new barrel to the gun or doubling the damage of the weapons. The next one is my favorite. Uh, this is the missile battery. This one will fire a couple of missiles at first, one out of each side, but it'll work its way up to this massive barrage coming out and uh, these things will target random asteroids. And I didn't want to have each missile going through the logic of trying to update uh, where a asteroid is that it can target. And so I ended up making a shared component between the missile battery and the turret. And that's the radar component. It detects when asteroids are within the radar range. And it has functions for the nearest enemy or a random enemy. So I can just call those and it does all the hard work of tracking things. So that was kind of cool where by emulating the way something might happen in real life, it actually did save on some computing resources. Uh, I don't have a whole bunch of logic in these missiles. They're just grabbing an enemy out of the radar and saying, hey, tell me where to go. Those are all of the projectile weapons, but then I added a single beam weapon. This one is some sort of lasery railgunny thing. It charges up and then fires this massive beam, and this one actually damage scales by 100 each time. I do have my asteroids. Each one is four times more damage than the previous one. The smallest one takes one damage to destroy, but the largest one takes over a million. This beam weapon is a thing that can really really break the large asteroids quickly. I actually had some trouble where each asteroid would break into two of the smaller variant of asteroid. It would completely tank the frame rate when this thing went off because it would destroy the entire asteroid, you know, multiply by two all the way down and you end up having 500 minerals come out of a single shot. I had to rethink how this is done. Now the beam weapon will subtract the damage that it does each time it hits an object. That will reduce it a little bit where it can't destroy 10 large asteroids. It'll just destroy one. Even that was a little bit too powerful. So the next tweak I made was the asteroids themselves. At first, I was breaking each asteroid into two asteroids of one size down, but they aren't double the size of the previous ones. If they were, the largest ones wouldn't even fit on screen. To have the largest asteroid break into two asteroids that are just slightly smaller than it doesn't really make sense. Instead, for everything larger than, I think it was size five, it will break into a small asteroid of size one, two, three, or four, along with the next size down. And so now it's breaking unevenly like that. Instead of having 500 minerals, you get maybe a couple hundred when you nuke the largest one with this laser. And I think it looks really cool. I also have a upgrade to increase my collection area. When you shoot this asteroid and all of these minerals rush in and then you get a level up, it feels really satisfying. I have an hour left at this point, and I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to finish this game in that hour. So I switched things around to start you off with the most powerful weapon. I also added a debugging option to start the game with any weapon, and so I just turned all four of them on. The goal is going to be to try to balance everything at this maximum state. And so this was tweaking how many of each bullet comes out, how powerful those bullets are, trying to get everything leveled off and balanced. 
But yeah, this is the end then of the 24 hours, and I have an insanely powerful, kind of fun feeling, destroying asteroids thing. And I also have a little bit of a level up system. I do have the upgrades working my way up. Uh, some of them, like the turret, I only have three upgrades right now. I have one barrel, two barrels, and three barrel. So that is something I would like to go back and fix. And I did actually set my leveling up rate to a curve where I can just change the shape of this curve and that'll determine how many minerals I need to collect at each level. This is between 0 and 100 but I end up changing it where I can pick the maximum number of levels and that changes how the levels are spaced along that curve which is a really easy way to adjust difficulty. I'm actually tuning this game to be something that is fun but challenging for me to play. If you hear a lot of advice online to developers they say don't do that make it easier. So I'm gonna set a dynamic difficulty where this number increases each time you lose without reaching let's say level 30 and so if you play this game and you lose a handful of times it will get easier but once you reach that level 30 this is going to reset for the next run. I'm going to put this game on itch and I want everyone to go play it because I think it's fun and I need you to tell me if I'm just crazy or if it's actually fun. I'll do that dynamic difficulty setting uh, but so if you win the game once it doesn't mean you are good at the game. Go back and do a second run and if you win it twice uh, then you can tell me you're good at the game. As I'm editing the video, I did end up going back and tweaking all of these numbers a little bit more. And so now I have a pretty fun balance where I was able to work my way all the way up to the 30 minute mark and I unlocked all uh, 50 levels. So all of the base upgrades, uh, I managed to get that at about 20, 25 minutes. And so that it feels pretty good in that sense. The progression is locked in. Obviously I'd love to add more content, but I think that kind of ruins the spirit of a 24 hour challenge to add content after the 24 hours um, but I, I did end up spending I think about 28 hours in total on mostly tweaking as I've been working on the video. So yeah this is the final version of the game. I will show you some gameplay footage and then I would encourage you please check it out and let me know what you think and hey if enough people like this game and tell me that this is something worth messing around with more I'll definitely put a little bit more time into it. I had that idea for a story and some gameplay and I thought it'd be really fun to make a survivor's game with a little bit more stuff. Uh, but yeah, let me know either way. This has been the 20 Games Challenge. Uh, I thought it was quite fun. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.